Welcome back. On today's shows, Who Teaches Hate, we've been discussing how we learn prejudice. Trying to teach students the opposite is Anna Fiorentini, founder of Anna Fiorentini Film and Theater School. Welcome, Anna. Hello, lovely to be here. How are you? Welcome, Anna. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> She was Let's watching see. us here before and she was like, I want to go in, I want to be there, I want to talk as well. <laughs> <laughs> Have my face. Well, um, her school is celebrating Very its 15th year. Anna has noticed a downturn in students from ethnic minority backgrounds. They were the majority when she first started. And it's now fundraising for scholarships so that she can encourage more kids on lower incomes to join the school. So tell us more about your campaign, Anna. Okay, so I set the school up 15 years ago. Wow. It was primarily for children who've got lots of talent yes. but can't afford extortionate stage school fees. Right. Or those that want to increase in confidence and self-esteem via the performing arts. But what I found over the years, everyone said, oh, it's in hack, the flagship school's yeah. in hack. You'll get loads of funding, this is so good, it's so needed. But I found over the years, because of our successes, because of the Business of London Awards that it's won, it's got harder and harder to get funding. Mm -hmm. And you can get funding if it was going to be on gang crime drama or mm -hmm. about guns mm -hmm. or if I was going to segregate. Let's just have a drama group for the black children. Let's have a drama group for the Muslim children. Yes. Let's have a drama group for the disabled children. Because I'm inclusive. Yes. Mm -hmm. I accept everybody. Everyone. It's very difficult to get funding. Mm -hmm. It's virtually impossible because I refuse. And aren't we supposed to be in an inclusive society? Oh, of course. Yes. And yet from the top, where the funding is coming from, you have to tick boxes, yes. which encourage, encourages you to segregate. Mm. So I've started this campaign, I'm like, do you know what, it's getting impossible to get funding from mainstream funders, I'm just going to have to do it myself and try and raise funding for scholarships and bursaries, which is why I've started this campaign, we're trying to raise 30,000 by Christmas, wow. so that we can support another 100 children That's per fantastic. term for the next three years, so wow. doing lots of fundraising events, etc. I'm still filling in my funding, yes. Yes. and I'm still trying to change of the course. perception that yes. just because you're successful, it doesn't mean you've got tons of money. Yes. You still want to help the very children you're helping, mm -hmm. but it's, it's difficult to change mindsets. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I, I believe mean, everyone, yeah. everyone who is bold and try for something that, as you said, is not ticking boxes, is always more challenges than it. Sorry, yeah, yeah, I it, it, No, I was just going to ask how it's, it's very interesting. I mean, what, what, um, what inspired you to, to do this, this project? Well, I mean, I trained as an actress, um, still am an actress, and I grew up in Hackney. And like I said, there was lots of little community drama clubs or clubs run by charities, but there was no professional training. Okay. I, my poor parents had to drag me into town to get training on a Saturday because I really wanted my dance, my singing mm -hmm. and my drama classes, mm -hmm. but there was nothing in the local area. So I just thought, no, I want... West End directors, choreographers, musical directors coming to Hackney, mm -hmm. giving something back to the community and giving traditional training mm -hmm. so that all my students can compete with other students from more affluent areas. Again, going back to the funding thing, if I was just going to stick to street dance classes or drumming classes, yes, there are careers in those areas, mm -hmm. but there's more than that of course. going, you know, there's... Of course. I mean, you, 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 um, it was mentioned earlier that um, there's been a downfall in yeah. your ethnic minority. I mean, wh why I is that? Yeah. It started off so well with, with plenty of yeah. ethnics. And I what don't happens? Know what, yeah, I think that's more to do with what's the um, degenerate, what's the word when a, a, an area of London becomes degenerate, gentrified. That's right, etc. yeah. So, because ironically, my, my fees aren't any more than what they were. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, with inflation, but not compared to what they were. So, when I first opened the school, we naturally had 85% were ethnic minorities. We've still got a large percentage of ethnic minorities, but just not as many. But I think that's to do with the area. Okay. And again, it's not, it's about you were talking earlier about association. I disagree that just because you're ethnic minorities that you're going to come from poverty. Yeah. Again, that's it's about yeah. perception yeah. and association. Mm -hmm. I've got lots of black friends who are very affluent, exactly. and I'm three times yeah. of what I am. <laughs> 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 yeah. So I don't, again, it's about, you know, the perception. So when I've said we're a downtown in ethnic minorities, it shouldn't be associated with lack of bursaries, because yeah. not every ethnic minority is going to need a bursary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Do you come up with a lot of prejudice within the field that you're doing, and how do you teach the students to come away from prejudice? I've been very fortunate in that we haven't had, in the 15 years that I know of, 
any racial incidents. I think because we're teaching everyone, you're more likely to make it if you're unique. It sounds like mm, it gives yeah. it the opposite effect. Because you are teaching everybody, you're actually bringing every sort of community Absolutely. together. Absolutely. We're is... teaching them, if, you're, if you look different or you sound different, you're more likely to make it because mm. you've got something unique about yourself. Right. Uh -huh. right. So that's what we're teaching. We're also teaching everyone to respect each other. And, you know, if you've got a problem, let's discuss it. Yeah. Obviously, I come from very role play, drama. Let's yeah. empathise, let's put ourselves in somebody else's shoes. That's right. How do they feel? I remember years ago, nothing to do with the school, it's a separate project, I worked with 10 black teenagers in Hackney, mainly um, boys, and 10 white police officers. It was about an hour's workshop, and I got them to role play. And I made sure that the white police officers played the black youth mm -hmm. and vice versa. Right. Interesting. <laughs> and I set them up Very lots, clever of, of yeah, you. Yeah, lots of different scenarios. It could have gone mm. for, I could have had a riot on my hand. Yeah. Phew, didn't happen. <laughs> By the end, they were shaking each other's hands and they were like, thank you. I never realised, no wonder you felt victimised. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. oh, I didn't realise how hard your job is because how do you find, oh. you know, the perpetrator or whatever. They both started to have an understanding. Change of view, I believe they start uh, putting themselves in the other yeah. person's yeah. shoes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, again, I don't think you can teach someone not to be prejudiced. But uh -huh. what you can do is step away from stereotypes and give them an understanding. Mm -hmm. From, yeah, back well, from a you, you are on your 15th year of your school, so you have probably a lot of stories. Can you share with us some <coughs> stories of, you know, success, yeah. you know, where you saw good results, people, maybe youths, you know, who came to you to, to say thank you because I was like these, I thought like these, I felt like these, now I'm like that. Yeah. Can you share anything with us that you can remember? Yeah, I mean, I've got lots of stories, obviously they're confidential, of I know children that were about to go into a gang, for example. Mm. Parents phoning me up crying, mm -hmm. I found my child with a gun, da 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 and we've managed to turn their lives around. Obviously mm. they're confidential stories, mm. I can't yes. give names. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of career successes, we've had people like little Taj Miles, who was Simba in The Lion King in the oh. West End, and mm -hmm. Nipper in Oliver. He then went on to Matilda. He's now in a CBBC programme, Class Dismissed. Wonderful little actor, um, mm -hmm. very down to earth and friendly. Mm -hmm. We've got Jermaine Jackman, who won The Voice a couple of years yeah. ago. Wow. Belinda Owusu, who had a five-year contract with EastEnders playing mm -hmm. Squiggle. Orla Hill, who's currently starring in the film Swallows and Amazons. So lots of lovely success stories. Our oh, little, um, little Jaden is currently playing Fletcher in The Bodyguard. Wow. Alongside, is it Beverly, alongside Beverly Knight? I'm sure that many of, many of those who are there look, at, look up to them. I believe, and they are like, I want to be, so I can, mm. I can be like them, yeah. isn't it? I mean, Motivates the good thing is, I mean, them. I'm always like, I, I mean, I've got about 350 students. Most of them will wow. not go into the profession. Yes. But everything that we're teaching them, how mm -hmm. to be punctual, how to be respectful, how to yes. smile at an interview and not go in with your hoodie on, you yeah. know, all of those yes. kinds of things, it's going to help them in whatever career they decide to go into. Yeah. So, you know, so when I say success it, I'm not just talking about TV, no. theatre, things. Yes. It's like I know um, former students who are now working in as in companies, mm -hmm. phoning me up saying I wouldn't have had the confidence to oh. go for that interview. So yeah, so to me that's just as good a success. Of course. How rewarding. Yeah. It's very, very yes. rewarding. I mean, how much of a role do you think that entertainment industries, you know, have a part in playing in teaching prejudice? Again, I think it goes back to stereotypes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I might be completely wrong, but in my experience, every time I see a film that is mainly a black cast, mm. it's always about racism or street crime. Yeah. Now, who, whose responsibility is it to make sure that we have black cast of a variety of different That's subjects? Right. You know, so I think it, how... I don't know whose responsibility it is, but I think it's important from a young age giving people of all cultures opportunities... And again, it goes back to my funding thing. Like, if I could only give funding to certain sectors of society, then it's not actually going to give everybody an opportunity mm -hmm. to get different job roles when they're older. I remember going seeing a few years ago an actor called Joseph Marcel, who plays the butler in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. He was playing Claudius in Hamlet at the Basingst Haymarket Basingstoke. And I went to see him in this classical role. I was like, wow. This is, I mean, actually playing um, Jeffrey is already against stereotype because he's a very posh middle class. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But then I see him as in the Shakespearean, <clears throat> and I was like, what an amazing role model that is for my students. So I wrote to him. Two days later, he rang me. 
came and gave a masterclass at my oh, school wow. so all my young people could see actually if we don't have to just play hoodies and yes. films there are oh, other opportunities out there so That's you know right. things like that I think is so important um, I mean there was the whole uproar wasn't there with Hermione in um, Harry Potter yeah. being played and she was an Olivia award-winning actress mm -hmm. and look at the uproar just because she was a, a black actress yeah exactly but even is it J. Carl, I'm used to names J.K. Rowling yes. she, even she said I never said what race she's going to be mm -hmm. so again how come it's again is that prejudice is it just what we're used to it has to come from the top. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It's quite yeah. interesting it that, is, you, yeah, that you say that, that it's coming from the top. So how do, you, how do we educate those at the top and bring it back to... I'm hoping it's going to be a general, gen, as we, you know, the generations. <laughs> you know, sometimes we get casting breakdowns for children, um, for teenagers. It might say a 16-year-old boy, this build, and it doesn't actually give a race. And the, the lady who runs my agency for me, Rhiannon, she'll phone up and she goes, um what race, and they'll just say, oh, white. They assume that it's white. white unless they specify a race. Now, I'm assuming that as our generations, you know, as we get older, you know, that, that will change, that mentality yeah, will change. Yeah. But again, I think we have to, you know, encourage that to That's happen. That's right, and it has to start yeah. with individuals. That's as individual, isn't it? And I, like I said, I don't think... Sometimes when we say, how do you teach not to be sometimes you can go over the top mm -hmm. and people can be like oh god here we go again you know mm -hmm. I'm, I mean, i mean when i grew up in hackney i was one of three white children in a class mm -hmm. i didn't even notice i grew mm -hmm. up color blind yeah. <laughs> you, you know were. it's like all my friends were either black or asian or the you know the two white kids in the class it didn't even occur to me then you get to teenager you go to secondary school and we're talking many moons ago <laughs> <laughs> but you know and and then you the teachers there, because they wanted to, you know, apologise for all the bad stuff that's happened in the past, and you should, and you should learn from the past, and we've got to educate, mm -hmm. but it was over at every class. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. about how badly black people have been treated. Da -da. Even my black friends were like, oh, not this again. Yeah. <laughs> that has to be a balance. Yeah. Balance, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. And sometimes you can go the other way. Yeah, how right. do you get over it if you keep just... Going over it. Yeah. 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 Right. So it's, about, it's about forgiving, if you can. That's right. It's not about forgetting... But it's about moving on and moving forward. Yes. I actually um, was speaking, you know, I, I do a bit of counselling. I was actually speaking to someone who's been abused in a younger age in life. And I hadn't seen her for such a long time. And she came to actually see me. And it was just, you know, not to break confidentiality, but... You know, it's about not speaking about the same thing. You've, you've, you, you know, you have spoken about that. Over and yes. over and over again. But she came I'd... back to show you the progress that she's no, made. No, in actual fact, she came to speak about the same thing. And, oh. and, and my, my, my voice was, let's not speak about that, because we spoke about that more than many, many times. Let's speak about the future. What is your goals? What's, yes. You know, what have you been doing and things like that. And it is about getting that balance. It is about moving, moving forward. And, the, and again, sorry to harp on about it, no, but going no. back to funding, when you can only get funding because you're harping on about... Mm. Again, my black um, students are like, but we don't want to do gun crime drama. Yeah. We want to learn a bit of ballet. Yeah. We want uh -huh. to be able Why to not? use our Why voices. Not you know, but you can't get funding for that mm. because it doesn't tick the boxes. And yet that is what's going yeah. to help them. It's almost like, well, let's give them funding to do street dance, for example. And that's and have a stereotyping. Twist. You have to have a twist in your show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> precisely. And it kind of is almost like, let's keep them under the thumb so mm -hmm. that they can't keep compete. them in that little, yes. In gen, you know, in, with the rest of society. I'm sure it's not that. But sometimes when I'm getting on my high horse, I'm like, uh -huh. you just want to keep everyone under the thumb. <laughs> let's give everyone opportunity. That's right. I get oh, quite passionate Anna. about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so, so much for coming Thank here. You. you added a lot. To Thank the top you, twig, isn't it? Very yes. helpful, very interesting. Even for those who are watching, I'm sure they loved your presence here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Keep you. up the good work. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, we are going to take a short break, but don't go away as we will be back with more on Who Teaches Hate in our style segment with Jessica Ann.